all right so today we're working on the square baler um i went ahead and already checked that chain pulled the whole side off of it um got into this one and that one over there was fine it was tight everything looked good nothing wrong and then you get to this one and it's so loose that i mean <laughs> that's why you always check these chains and pull them off before hay season gets here because there's no way of seeing these to check them i mean the way the covers are on these i mean i think there's a hole underneath but you got to get up underneath the baler to really see it and get into it there's no way of knowing but what happened with this thing was is the idler worked loose somehow and it slid down so we got to take the impact loosen it up and tighten it and then this chain that's down in here it's got a little bit of play to it so i got to do something with that and try to tighten it up a little bit too but this one here is awful so let me uh let's see i don't think i can get a socket no i'm gonna have to get a swivel so let's go get a swivel and an extension still won't fit. dang it i'm gonna take it i might have what i need right here on maybe that's why those were laying there i done forgot so this chain oh boy um Mm, I got one box of chain, which is enough for enough for the knotters, uh, and I think that's the same size chain as on the knotters. What size chain is this? Uh, I can't see. I need my. Well, let me get my phone out and see what size chain this is. Yeah, it's number 50 chain, so it's the same as the knotter chain. The only problem is, is I don't know if I've got enough of it to replace this chain, too. The the cheap part of me says take a link out, but I've done... I know what happens. If I take a link out, when this thing's completely out of play, they used to have a lot of play travel to them. And uh, what'll happen is it'll wear these teeth off. Then I have to buy this sprocket, and I have to buy that sprocket, and then now all this has to come off, and then chances are I might have to buy that bearing, because that bearing's going to go ahead and be replaced when that's, all this gets took off. And then if I'm lucky, I won't ruin... Well, I think these are actually one piece, so I would have to... That's probably going to have to all be replaced at one time. So, yeah. And then... And then I'm going to have to be out all that money rather than just a, a cheap 50 chain. And it's not that it's cheap, but it's cheaper than paying for all that other stuff. So that's the dilemma. Uh, okay, so we need to figure out how much chain we're going to have left when we get done with the knotters. And if I have enough or if I can find some laying around here, I'll just go ahead and put a new chain on that. Back again. The other day um i didn't get to come back to this yesterday i got busy and never got to do any of the chains uh, i'm gonna try to start this morning off and actually complete something and that's change these knives i'm hoping to get this baler done today i've got we're probably going to need it first of next week so as far as everything but the plunger knives because i don't have those yet i uh, need need to call and see if they tried to call me and i just didn't know it and see if those are in but the way everything's been going with shipping and behind i doubt it um but yeah we gotta change these twine knives right quick so let me set y'all up find somewhere to stick y'all so y'all won't fall over all right Pull the clips and 
pins and I'm going to try to get to these a little better. I don't know. To where I can peel the thing up. Just ain't a lot of room to do anything on, on these 40s compared to the older models. Which they're basically the same baler, but they've got more shielding and crap on them. This hood I connected the shock back up. Yeah, I need to just undo it right there with a the screwdriver, but I ain't done it yet. Where I can get some more light, let's just go ahead and do that now. Oh, let's see here. I can take it off this top instead. Yep, there we go. Let's just open this thing up. Phew. That way we can at least have some light. So y'all can see what I'm doing. I just changed these last year, but I know that if I don't change them about a quarter of the way in or halfway through, they're going to need changing again or sharpening or something. So I just can just change them now and be done with it. So that's that side. I'll go ahead and do, get both sides sticking up. Finally rain yesterday. We've been kind of in a, a drought for the past two or three weeks it rained a lot for a while and then it cut off dry and it didn't rain none for a long time it's kind of messed everything up i hope y'all can see kind of messed everything up for a while force And it's been too windy to spray, so you get the worst on both sides. No rain for hay and no uh, non-windy dry weather to spray. Maybe now I can get a hold of this thing. pieces that I dropped. Um, change this blade out. Set this back up here. This is probably one of the easiest jobs on a square builder to work on. It's just everything's so small that it could get aggravating sometimes to get everything on. The pieces can get aggravating to try to line it all up. My arm is not blocking y'all's view. It's got two little bolts. Take this and all right. So tighten these. I'm just gonna 
take this I ain't gonna weigh along with the impact I just wanted to use it to run down the last thing I want to have to deal with is broken knife bolts and the twine or knife arm knife arm to the bill hook to see how much resistance I had. See if it needs more or less. About where I like it. So that's good. Right. Okay, I take and these back. I need a bigger set of pliers with help, wouldn't it? All right. So let's get that done. Let's get this in here. Okay, that's got the knives on. Uh, the desk and all look good. Um, I like these clean outs on these inlines to protrude just a hire. They are on each side. Um, just means that these, the screws and all are set right and everything. So it looks like the knotters are in pretty good shape. Um, I don't really see anything else other than these, I call them moon disc, but they're forget the term that Heston uses for them. I need to check the gap on those and make sure that they're right. I think those are actually supposed to be even with the plates and they're not quite even. So they may need a little adjustment. And the way you adjust those is you just undo these two nuts here and slide it back and forth. Or you have a adjustment in these uh, in the connecting rods. So um, I don't think that there's any problem with the with the uh, twine keeper uh, pressure or anything like that. I think everything's good there. Uh, the way I check those is I've got a little spring uh, scale that I use to pull on the bill hook grip and everything to check the uh, the tension on those but they should be okay i don't we haven't had any time problems so i don't and the way everything looks it looks good it don't look like it needs anything so we should be good to go there it's just not the baler's still new enough it ain't all that should be okay um but if i have to i'll go through all that if we do start having a missed tie every so often but I pride myself on trying to keep this thing to where we do not have any missed ties or anything to go wrong with these knotters. Uh, that just annoys the living hell out of me. Um, I want to keep everything moving perfect um, and not giving trouble. Because if I start having trouble and in the field, it, it, it irritates the crap out of me. And I'll go through the whole thing if I have to. And uh, that's what happened with the 37. Um, I, I tuned it up and had everything working good and then all of a sudden it it, uh, it got to where it started having some issues and then I, I pulled out the the uh, book and started measuring all the the parameters and everything everything was supposed to be set at and I realized that well a lot of the parts are wore out so we ended up replacing the bill hooks and and I just went through and just basically completely rebuilt them for what needed replacing um, and retuned and set everything from that moment on we had no more knotter issues on it so you can take one of these end lines and if you know what you're doing you can rebuild one i mean for nearly nothing i mean the main thing is on these i get asked all the time 
when you're looking at these, what do you look for? Uh, the main thing is you want to check your plunger, obviously. Um, any kind of damage or anything inside the chamber. The way you access that to really check the plunger arm, which I'll show you guys, is up top up here, there's a door, two doors that comes off. You really need to pull both. Um, one's this one, when it's the knotter tops down, this is all open right here. You pull this door that's here off and you can see straight down the chamber at your knives. You wanna check your knives, you wanna check your plunger. Um, and then the rails down the plungers under here. And you can see all that from in there. It takes uh, three bolts to pull the top completely off and look at all that. They do have these holes here. So you can get in here and look at these, but all that stuff is fixable. And really, I won't say it's inexpensive, but it's not that expensive. I could take one of these balers that's had a ton of hay put through it. As long as the gearbox is still tight and good and the plunger rails and everything, which you, the plunger rails, you can work on it and do and fix those. But as long as your gearbox is in good shape and there's no chamber dam damage done to it and uh, whatnot, you can pretty well fix these balers and build them back like new if you know what you're doing. And it's, they're, I don't know what the prices are today, but on the 37 it wasn't that bad um which we bought that baler and it was it had somebody had tore it up pretty bad and the company we bought it off of uh they had put it back together they trade on used equipment i found it online they put it back together and got everything somewhat functioning but it was not tying right when we got it and it had a couple other issues i, I can't remember what they were but when I got done with it, it was like a new one as far as running. Um, and that baler, I'll be honest about it, it bailed as good as this 40 nearly. The only thing it, it probably lacked in was obviously the strokes on this one or more. So you can bail, it'll handle more volume a little better. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next. I want to take these shields off, so we got to do that. Um, I guess I can just go ahead and pull all that off now and get it out of the way. All right, I went to pull this shielding off. <laughs> or I went to take the chain off and I can't stand on the side and it's just uncomfortable as hell. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this dang thing off. So I don't have to deal with it anymore. At least on this side for right now. Echo guys may get mad because I'm promoting taking their baler apart. <laughs> but I don't care. They don't pay me anyway. put that in on there meant for it to stay the other one come right off well when you fail get a bigger one as they say a bigger range these half inch steels I had here in the toolbox I did not want that shield coming off. Which is good. Should be tight. Ready to be tight and loose. Alright, so that's got that undone. Oh, that's hollow. I gotta get down here underneath pretty grouch y'all here 
that there. Get these off. All right, hit them once and got them loose, but they're the nuts on the back are spinning. And you can see why I want this thing gone right now. I mean, you just cannot get underneath this baler. And when it's 90 degrees outside and it's dusty and there's crap falling off this baler and you're laying underneath it, you're mad because somebody plugged the baler or sheared a shear pin, you just get madder. Because you can't do what you want to do because of the damn shield in the way. Okay, so that's got all these off. Try to find somewhere to lay these. I'm gonna flip the twine this open. And where's that bolt at? It's right here. Okay. So somewhere I can stick y'all so y'all can see. Well, this tripod, there we go. Alrighty. Make sure it's right size before I try to get a hold of the bait. There it is. And there she goes, including y'all. Dropped y'all too. No more shield. Thank the Lord. Ain't gotta deal with that annoying ass thing anymore. Now, I can step up here, slide right out of here. I got lean up again the little twine arm thing there and hold myself up. If I need to get under here, I can now access my highlights right there to run my twine through. Or I can get on up in here and undo these bolts pull this door if I need to without everything being a pain in the butt improvement one to this thing of, of many that we're going to be doing I really should just take this thing off but because it does nothing other than hold that up and just get it out of the way too but I guess I could leave that there for a foot rest in case I was to ever need to climb up there and stand on it or something. It would work good for that and get over the top like that chain. Something like that. I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll work around it for today and then see if I want to take it off or not. But uh, let me loosen this chain up and then we got to take it off. Alrighty. Uh, the way I got it off, I just threw it, set it off that cog right there. And then I pulled it off, obviously loosened it up, pulled it off of this one, then you can pull it right around where you need to be. Here's the, the joiner. Try to get this thing undone to pull it off. Windy today. That dry air is finally came out. That was over us for a while. I guess I should have been bailing hay the last two weeks, but it just hasn't been in the cards because it's crap like this that hasn't got done yet.
it's not wanting to come to come off. These things too hard because you'll break your screwdriver every dang time. Learned that one the hard way several times. It's that hard to even just get a punch and a hammer or something, to figure out some way to get it loose. Got it all. Now we gotta lay it out and figure out how much we need. But that'll be for the next video. So thank y'all for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm nearly out of SD card space, so I gotta go grab another one anyway. And it's a good place to stop. And we'll see you next time. There's the boat. May take y'all fishing one day. I ain't made up my mind yet, but we'll see. Um, Took it out the other day, had a real good day on it. Love it so far. Uh, I know I mentioned it in another video the other day. I've had it on the water twice since I got it done building it. Um, bought me a new bait today. Uh, Lou's, which I like their rods. Um, they got some pretty decent rods. Dude, do, don't buy the Mach 2. It's just a overhyped, cheap rod. Uh, the hack attack lose actually has internal braking along with external whereas <coughs> the mach 2 is more expensive than the hack attack and you would think that it would but it don't it's, this is a really just a cheap reel on a little bit nicer setup rod uh the hack attack version is on a little bit cheaper rod it's basically the same rod the only difference is it has a little bit smaller grip at the end than the typical lose one um, but you get about a lot higher quality reel um, So don't don't buy the Mach 2 uh, Try to find you one of these loose hack attacks. They're pretty good if they haven't changed them for a medium heavy bait caster and then I've got two Other rods here. One's a Mach 1 uh, Really like that rod it casts smooth. I bought a, a Boo Garcia Max last year <coughs> spinning reel the reel broke within the first four times of using it, it literally come apart on the inside. So I went and bought a lose, a cheap lose uh, mock. What is this? It's the mock smash or whatever to go on it. Love the reel. Um, still don't, and I don't like the rod now. It's it just doesn't feel comfortable. Um, I also like Shimano or Shimano, ever how you want to say it, uh, stuff too not a big fan of boo garcia i've had two of their rods and reels granted this one is a cheap one um and both broke within a month of owning them so i'm not real crazy about a boo garcia uh, i've had two bad experiences with them and i don't like throwing my money away for nothing uh, the loose stuff i've had no problems out of uh, other than the disappointment that this one did not have internal brakes um 
which I should have opened the reel up before I bought it. But I figured being it was supposed to be a higher end rod and reel than this one, that it would. I would love to have a, a custom speed spoof, um, but it's a little bit steep for me. I'm not gonna pay that much. I don't go fishing or do to do any tournament fishing, so I don't I don't wanna pay for it. Come look at the pool so you can see it. It's a windy day. And once I walk in the house, you're going to say, y'all got trash all in my pool. And you're going to freak out. And I just cleaned it, but it's a windy day, so there's more trash going to get back in there. So you can look at it so you don't freak out. You want hamburgers tonight? No. Yeah, sure. You better not put that on YouTube. I may. I should. I should do like all the other YouTube husbands. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that that's uh, my rod and reel stuff. Uh, and my reels and rods I've got on the boat anyway. I've got a pile of them. There's a bunch over here and some over there in the corner of older stuff too that I use. Um, for your kids though, you still can't beat an old Zebco 33. <coughs> Just a regular closed face rod. Um, but I really like to lose bait casters. Hey everybody, I mean, I know that, that kind of fads went and gone, but I'm still been pleased with their stuff. Um, I mean, I just haven't had a bad experience when them failing, unlike Abu Garcia. Um, and I'm not trying to throw off on them. I'm sure that they've got some gooder stuff, but the stuff I've bought it has not been good. So, see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Please comment and uh, give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Uh, it really helps to do that. Share the videos. Get these things out there. <coughs> the fun, entertaining stuff's coming. See y'all later.